Did this Australian influencer in one minute just explain why so many Asian women tend to go for white guys? Man, we're going to break it down. Yeah, this one was a doozy. Let's run the clip from Fooligan Kevs, an Australian influencer based out of Sydney, Australia. Why do Asian girls always go for white guys? I don't think I can speak for the whole Asian girl population, but today I will because I can. Generational propaganda with a J. They probably grew up watching movies and Disney and that where the main hot guy was a white guy. It's like their childhood conditioning of that all attractive men are white. And not just these girls, but their mums. Because their mums probably grew up watching Tom Cruise and shit, thinking that Tom Cruise is fucking hot when he's five foot six. And the number two reason is they don't. Asian girls go for Asian guys, bro. They're probably just not going for you. I'm so sorry, man. Maybe like pick up a gym membership or, you know, they like the tattoos. Chuck a sleeve on. Put a, put a dragon. Put a koi fish. Maybe they'll, you'll have better luck, bro. Can't find the comment, but someone asked, how do I get myself an Asian girl? Asian girls are split into two categories. One being the ABG and second being not. How to know the difference? Trust me, if she is that, she will make that part of her personality. They have a common factor in between them in that both girls have issues. As with many women, these girls will usually favour the bad boy archetype, bad boy. Meaning someone who looks like they stab people. Whereas these girls always go for the clean boy, doctor, lawyer, engineer. What these both have in common though, whether their income is illegitimate or legitimate, is they want you to spend on them in the form of handbag, food, and gas so lean, the most important one, as you'll probably be giving them lifts because they do not have their license. Woo! Oh, oh. I'm telling you the comment section ah, went ah. all around the world and back. Make sure you like this video, Andrew. She was addressing some hot topics. I mean, we're talking about stuff that people have been talking about for 20 years on the internet explained in 20 seconds yeah i love this video man real quick guys we're gonna break down her video and then we're gonna break down the comment section which is spicy by the way and you know this being a topic that we've talked about on our channel for years we've read a lot of posts about it. i've talked about it with a lot of dudes in person a lot of women in person as well so we'll try to add our insight guys but uh yeah please hit that like button check out other episodes of the hot pot boys from silly to serious first off we gotta say andrew she addresses it as wisdom from australasia i mean she does a lot of funny stereotype archetype breakdowns, right? Yeah. She did a clean boy, bad boy one that was really good as well. But let's get into her points, Andrew. Generational propaganda with a J. I mean, she was talking about the media conditioning over years of, I guess what global western dominance right yeah and even the media that gets exported from hollywood out to asia what i call it propaganda i don't know i don't think this is the top reason although i definitely think media plays a role i think personally it's more that just the western world standing amongst the globe for the past like two three two three hundred years was considered a lot higher they had all the advancements not all the advancements sorry a lot of the advancements they had a lot of the nice things right. they so had you're the saying it's not just propaganda it's actually just quite blatant logistical dominance uh, a little bit of that for sure yeah to be honest we gotta keep it real right uh moving on uh she said but they don't date white guys they mostly like asian men but just not your type of asian men <laughs> that was her point number two right yeah. this is kind of a shot at anybody watching this video right? no i thought this last part was great where her call to action was just like yeah so maybe you might want to work out and get some tattoos get a full sleeve and i was like Oh man, I'm not saying every guy should get a full sleeve tattoo. I don't have tattoos. However, if you get ripped and you get tattoos, you're gonna look different and you're gonna stand out and you're not gonna fall in line with that good confusion boy image. Yeah, I mean, honestly, based off the reps I've seen in my life and you know, we traveled everywhere in the world, She's not wrong. It just You works. can't say that she's wrong. By the way, do I think she oversimplified it for a viral video? But I do not actually disagree with anything she said, even though, of course, it gets a lot more nuanced. That's in the comments section. We're going to do our comments and takeaways, Andrew. Um, real quick, do you generally agree with Fooligan Kev's takes on things? Dude, I think she has a funny perspective. You know, I believe she is a LGBT ABG rapper, over in Australia. Rapper. Rapper. Comedian. In Australia. So she's got a lot of charisma. I like her videos. I like her because she kind of sees it from a dude perspective and a female perspective. But anyways, let's get into the comment section. Somebody said, uh, you know, as a white guy frequently traveling around Asia, I'd say the attention you get is a lot more than as a white guy in the West, especially if you travel alone. I've been going to family parties, weddings, you know, by invited by complete strangers wanting me to date their niece, marry their niece. 
I can't believe it. Nobody asked me that in Australia. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're a tall, decent-looking, handsome white guy that's friendly, <laughs> open-minded, and you're traveling to uh, maybe the outside suburban towns of a developing country, you are going to get treated kind of like a celebrity, Like right? Henry Campbell yeah, from Superman. Yeah, so I think it's very logical. I've also, by the way, this is not only reserved for white guys. I've heard stories, plenty of stories of black guys getting treated in a similar way, you know, because their image- But you do have to like kind of give the Kobe vibe, though. Yeah, if you give the the Kobe Michael Jordan vibe, you kind of get treated like a celebrity, just like this white guy. I guess that's where media comes into play, and that's what she's mm, saying. But at the yeah. end of the day, if the guys are tall and good looking, uh, globally, they're gonna get treated like. If that, you man. wanted me to break it down on a more quantitative level, I think Asian girls that like white guys in Western countries might give them a twenty five percent bump. So that's not gonna help a lot if you look like old Jonah Hill, you know, fat Jonah Hill. But if oh. you look like Jim from The Office, and let's just say, you, for example, that's a six, right? You're gonna get bumped to a. Uh, like an eight. Yeah. But I think, you know what hurts it, Andrew, is I will say this. I think sometimes Asian guys, even from their own uh, other Asian women, their counterparts might get down ramped. Yeah. So if white guys, Anglos, whatever, are getting up ramped and you're getting down ramped and you're at the same level six, that's starting to create a huge treatment disparity gap. Yeah. If I had to think about what hurts Asian guys the most, it's feeling like that some Asian women discount Asian men. Right. Just like non Asian women discount Asian yeah, men. Yeah. Right? That I think is the worst feeling out of all of this. I don't think it's necessarily the feeling that, oh, Asian women also want to date other types of guys because I think Asian guys also want to date other types of Asian, I mean, other types of non-Asian women, but Asian guys generally might not discount uh, Asian women. And I think much. that that's the big thing that makes it different from Latina women because Latina women are actually known to date out a lot as well, but they do not discount their own men algorithmically. Guys, to be watch honest. our video. We talked about the Latin and Asian couple that's increasing. Somebody said, uh, you know, I'm an Asian with a white blonde girlfriend that's hot and I have a dragon tattoo and I'm buff, so she ain't lying. And I looked into this guy's profile, Andrew. He is a bearded tattooed, buff, badass Filipino. He's got a Rolex, nice car. He takes badass photos, you know, wears sunglasses. Think about it, though. And I'm going to keep it real because I am an East Asian-looking guy. So but you I look like you play a lot of League, Counter-Strike, Overwatch, et cetera. Yeah, Maletera. I look like a gamer, right? So if you have the gamer face or the good Confucian boy face that you're born with that you can't really change that much, Okay, but if you get ripped and you get a tattoo and you get all this other things, you're just going to look so different that you're actually going to, it's going to actually open up the market of women to different types of non-Asian women that might like you because you look like a non-typical Asian. I, I think the truth is, is that different types of women like different types of guys. And even if you got really skinny, there might be girls who are into like celebrity gamers, which is an archetype in 2023 <laughs> that likes that. But then it would it depend on your ability to interface with that niche, right? There's a niche that likes a lot of things, not everything, David. not everything, but th there's like niches for a lot of things, but it depends on your ability to gain access to that niche. David, are you trying to say if I drop weight, I'm going to look like a celebrity gamer? Yeah, you're going to look like one of the top league players. I'm uh, in it. Let's do it. <laughs> this uh, Asian girl said, you know, I date white guys because I've already got one set of Asian parents with Asian expectations. I don't need two. Uh, all right. So when I read this comment, I actually laughed because at first I was like, yo, that sounds like a BS excuse. And I thought about it. I was like, it's not as BS as people think because I think Asian parents can be so traditional and so overbearing that a lot of Asian women and Asian guys, if they want to, they'll try to escape it. Right. I know Asian dudes who in a way, in their own way, escaped it. They dated in, they married into a Caribbean family or even a Chinese guy marrying into a Filipino family, which it's a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more fun, a little right. bit more That's almost salsa. as different of, of an Asian as you could get within the Asian world. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, what I mean, culturally it's different. So I guess like everybody does want to escape themselves because if they don't like it, they're going to do what they can. And it to is leave. true. Different culturals and different motherland heritages have absolutely some patterns of behavior that hold true for people from that country of origin. Somebody said it's literally colorism. Asian women are taught and find pale skin and feminine features attractive in traditional Asian culture. So basically, they uh, either like white guys because they're even whiter than the K-pop stars, but also there's a testosterone thing going on. Uh, yeah, I think when it comes to colorism in Asia, and we talk about this on the channel just to remind you, I think the colorism comes from a different place. Tanner skin generally means, oh, you got to work in the fields, but pale skin means you have the luxuries right. and the privilege. It's more on a imperial, dynastic, bureaucratic scale yeah. than 
than uh, like a, I was colonized scale. Yeah, like a lot of the pop stars don't necessarily try to look European. I'm not saying that European features are not valued. I'm just saying that it's, the goal in Asia is not to look like a white person, okay? Right. Um, so that's where I think I disagree with that. But, but, yeah. but what do you think about the second part of this kind of confusing comment about saying there's a testosterone mismatch? Because some of the men that are lauded in the East for K-pop or pop music in general do not fit the testosterone threshold desired in the West. Yeah. And obviously the Asian women that like white guys in the West, like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US, which are new world countries, are going by the Western testosterone standards. Guys, I would say in 2023, it, you can't go wrong with staying fit and getting rich. And I think that that's why Young and Jay Park were so valued, you know what I mean? Because they kind of were on both scales. Yeah. They hit the K-pop scale, they hit the Western scale. Yeah. That's why uh, Anders and stuff was so valued in the Asian my world. My general thing is like, unless you want to date women who are very much into K-pop, staying super skinny is not going to benefit you as much in America. So you either move to Asia or you just appeal to that market of women who really, really like that look. Yeah, even different types of looks at Asian girls. You know, like if a girl looks more like a volleyball soccer player, Asian girl, she's going to more appeal to Western people if she looks more like that super bulb type of jawline that's more Asia. You know, even mm -hmm. Asia got different looks for the same type of woman. Um, somebody said Asians fundamentally feel inferior to white folks. So when they date one, they finally feel like they made it out of the hole while all the other people are still stuck in the hole. It's no different than anybody who wears all fast, flashy designer. It's an obsession with white people and things that are higher ranked. I think European dudes, compared to most Asian families are assumed to come from a higher economic status. Or at least the type of white guys that Asian girls typically like. I don't think people understand. Not th There is some Asian girls who like like really like grimy looking, you know, white guys that are more like uh, uh, unsuccessful Pete Davidson or unsuccessful mm. Mac Miller. But it's more like they're going for the uh, Jim from the office, you know, Henry Campbell that more look. Yeah, I, I do Clean think, boy. I, and, I, and it's not that, like, I think everybody only thinks about money, but I think economic status or, like, uh, where you fall in the world is just one of the factors that people subconsciously take into account. And, Andrew, this is where this next comment went. So, like I said, we getting spicy into global dominant. Let's rent. get spicy! This guy was Mexican, and he's like, man, for reals, I've never even seen a Mexican guy and an Asian girl together. And then this uh, black guy said, yeah, they don't like dark skin. So this refers to, and then it led to another comment being like, Asian women only like Anglo-Saxon men or Scandinavian men. They do not even like Spanish or Italian Iberian Peninsula men. Because, Andrew, Anglos and Scandos, that's the part of the world that's been dominant for about 500 years. Uh, yeah, also I think that in their circles or in the interests, like maybe more interests of Asian girls align more with like, I guess the typical white guy versus like, I guess, like, Puerto Rican guys, for example. Right, right, because I have all, heard that at the street ball court. Like, somebody's like, hey, man, like, how come, like, Asian girls are always going for white guys and stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that it's something that people see around New York City, although I do know plenty of Asian women who grow up in those neighborhoods around those people, and they date those people. So I don't think, like, it's necessarily out of... I think the only thing that puts you out of their league is, like, if this fancy Asian girl wants to date this fancy white guy, what makes you think as like, if you're a street baller and a hooper at yeah. the park, that like, that you, girl's you gonna know, wanna you know date what I you. Would describe, like, that's like, doesn't make you any sense. You know what sense. I would describe, and this is like a really interesting theory, I just thought of it. Asian girls sort of like the type of guy that was killing it in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and I'm not talking about mobsters in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and 60s, like, you know what I mean, like Jimmy Hoffa. I'm talking about more like the good looking, like leave it to beaver type dude. That's like more, you know how like that archetype of guy that Captain America is based off? Like more nowadays in Western society, girls want Wolverine. They don't want Cyclops. But Asian girls, they're still going for the white guy that's like Cyclops. You know what I mean? Like kind of straight laced by the book, clean boy. I see your point. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about that theory. Somebody just said, listen, guys, it's not wrong. It just is what it is. But we've run the statistics. Just the majority of all interracial marriages that are not, you know, are pretty much just an Asian girl and a white guy. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, there's facts, guys. That's why this is talked about so many. That's why you can find so many posts about this on the internet uh, because it, there, there are some facts to back it up. Um, Somebody said, yo, man, the 5'6 comment was hilarious. Nobody wants guys that are 5'6. And this guy was like, yeah, well, you're like seven feet wide, so why are you dissing on short guys? Somebody came in and said, listen, 
You are a fat girl. You are a short guy. These are both traits that society does not find ideal to have a preference for in terms of idealizing on a, on a uh, mantle. But it's about being healthy and having a good heart. Somebody came back through and said, what kind of blue pill-ish thinking is this? And then somebody said, listen, guys, it's about being happy in life. There are happy mouses and sad tigers, even though a mouse is much lower than the apex predator tiger scale on the food chain. They are right in that happiness is about filling your bucket. Now, some people, they have high expectations and a larger bucket, but if you shrink it a little bit, you can be happier, easier. So I think that it is a lot of uh, a mental thing, but I think regardless, you don't, you can't, you can't look past the facts of what you see, you know? Right. No, the stats are the stats for sure. Yeah. Like, you know, somebody said, you know, I think that uh, WMIF was the greatest motivation for Asian men to get high income metrics in their careers because it really put us all on a chip on a shoulder. So if we think about it and flipping a negative into a positive, it really gave us a lot of motivation. That's a guy trying to see the silver lining. Also, I don't even know if this commenter is Asian. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that what it is is that... <laughs> it, any, it was a white guy who dates an Asian girl trying to... Dude, any no. guy who... Anything that can help build a chip on your shoulder can help drive you, but I don't think that's ever the full chip. If it's just like you go around all day just saying, oh, I see Asian girl with a white charged guy. Oh, I I'm see charged Asian girl with a white guy. Dog. I'm going to study more. Oh, I'm going to make $100,000 more this year because I saw Asian girl with a white guy. It's like, come on, man. That's not how it works. Anyway, moving on to the takeaways, Andrew. I'm sure we could talk about this for maybe a 1,000 hours because there's a, at least like 100,000 hours of discussions of this on the internet. If I was a non-Asian guy, that cared about Asian guys as my homies, but like I was just giving them outside advice, I might give them the same advice that Fooligan Kev's game. Because as an Asian guy, I know that the mechanics of becoming a tatted, buff, badass Asian guy are a lot harder because some of our parents, they hate that because it reminds of Yakuza or triads or et cetera, underworld things. But it, it would work, right? What Fooligan Kev's, what I'm saying is, Andrew, would you agree mechanically it's not wrong? No, no, it works, man. Like, and that's just the simple fact that is that your parents might not like it, but it'll get you more attention. It'll have you seen differently. I mean, even though if like, what if you're like, oh, but I come from a very Confucian family right. and my society and like the way like that we I have was been raised. scholars for 79 generations in China. Yeah, well, you know what? The world is different now and it's time to be a little appear less scholarly. You like, know what? I think that there's some abilities, even Confucius Kongzi himself, Andrew, would like understand suspending some kongzi this in certain situations like what, for what success if, reasons. What if you're still a nerd? What if you're still a geek? You're still that nice guy, but you just look more interesting. Yeah, yeah. And you know what it is too, man? That's a good point. Andrew, Kung Zhu was Chinese, right? Confucius was, but so was Tao Tao, who was just like a general who just got things done. I think a lot of people forget that, honestly, and this is a whole philosophical thing. Um, yeah, long story short, man, let us know what you think in the comment section below. We could talk about this. Make a thousand. There's a whole channel's run off this topic. Man, let us know. Keep it civil in the comment section below. Let us know what you think of Fooligan Kev's analysis. And until next time, we the Farm Bros. Make sure you like this video. We out. <laughs> Peace.